Hey everyone, this is Chris from Profit Alerts. Today is December 3rd, and this is a weekly recap of some uh, positions that we're taking um, and also some stocks that I'm looking at still and uh, what we did with these things. So <clears throat> ERTS is Electronic Arts. Uh, basically, I opened up a position today. I'm going to show you the intraday chart. Opened up a position for March $20 calls. Yeah, they're a little bit out of the money, but I'm expecting the stock to uh, uh, spike up here pretty soon. But um, Actually, uh, we opened these up right around this area right here, right about when the stock was about 1505 and was going sideways. Um, I particularly opened up this position at this level because it was holding these 200-day uh, these EMA, the 200-day the EMA and the 200-day moving average right at this level. And the market was looking strong like it was going to uh, reverse at any time and close green. And, um, you know, right from there, pretty much some people actually went long the stock, but um, most people followed me and, and I bought the... Uh, I bought the calls at 20 cents. They didn't really move much yet because the the stock they only moved up a few cents, but it did go from red to green. And here it is. It uh, it pretty much climbed through the rest of the day. And what I like about this pattern here is that this ha is a um, a nice. It has a nice double bottom area. As you can see from this level, this is a a, a one year chart. You can see from this level that it's rallied from these le uh, levels um, two other times before this. Uh, it's it's fallen down. To about the $15 range, uh, and dipped under the 15, hit the 14.75 area, and then it's rebounded, and it's always had strong rebounds from this area. Um, and given the timing of the market, that the market's looking pretty good. We've had a couple rallies this week. Uh, you know, going into the holiday season, I'm pretty bullish on the video game industry to begin with. Uh, so there's a really good catalyst here for this to pretty much act the same exact way. And one of my favorite patterns um, is an oversold reversal that spikes over the 10 day EMA. So as you can see here from the uh, stochastics here, the, so the stochastics are coming from the oversold level. The MACD right down here is pinching. And so it's kind of a pincher play too. We got the RSI trying to climb through the 50 level. The 10 day EMA is about to be broken. And I truly think that we can see some type of run here. As you, as you can see here before, anytime it's broken the 10 day EMA after a couple sessions right there, it spiked up pretty well. So as you can see, there's a, there was a nice spike right over the 10 day EMA, even though it was a gap, but it did gap up below the 10 day EMA and continued to have a nice move after that. Uh, it's also spiked right there, kind of fell back, but, um, you know, as you can see, it kind of did that before too. So anytime the 10 day EMA is broken on the stock, it looks like a nice catalyst. Everything looks good. Um, you know, the market rallies, obviously that'll help, but there's just a lot of support down here. So I'm liking the position for some out of the money calls. Uh, I'm looking for a double on them. I'm looking for them to go from 20 to 40 cents right in this range. If it can get up there fast enough, I believe that the uh, calls can hit, uh, between 35 and 40 cents. So nothing crazy. Um, you know, hundred percent move, but I'm, I only have a, a small position of, um, 40 calls. So, I mean, you know, it's not going to be too much of a, of a gain there, but, uh, I like these predictable moves. So, um, Another one uh, we were looking at this week, actually it was for the past couple weeks, was S-Gen. And this is a good example of what we just saw in the pattern for ERTS is uh, I started buying it in this range right uh, around the 10-day EMA. And I was looking for, uh, right actually over the 10-day EMA, and I was looking for it to break this high of this $15 range. And it, and it did, it actually made a high today of $16.37 before some uh, profit taking took in so here's the intraday chart so it made this high and then just pretty much dumped the rest of the day and that's why i recommend don't chase it um for re-entries because the risk reward isn't as good as when i recommended buying it but on the the watch list i sent out to the subscribers um i've been saying to buy dips buy this thing under the 15 dollars dips um you know for break over 15 dollars and with a price target of uh, 16 to possibly $17. Well, it hit $16, no problem. It hit 16.37. So this was just one of the plays I put on the watch list. Um, I go over the uh, the setups and you know suggest uh, buying on dips and where you should put the stop if you do buy in a dip. And this stock had aggressive dip buyers on this thing anytime under uh, anytime it dropped under 15. So there's no play on it uh, now for me. It does look really good that you do have this 10 day and the 50 day EMA cross. But the, the play for me was this break over the 15. That was a predictable play. Now it can kind of go anywhere at this point. Um, so that's just you know a good setup that I didn't really trade well myself, but it was a, a good pick. URRE is one that I did short the other day. I actually shorted yesterday. Um, I'm going to show you guys a two-day chart here. Um, I shorted it right about 372, right, right over in this range uh, yesterday. Uh, and then it pretty much, you know, uh, dropped down. And I, I covered it right in this range down here, about the 358 level. And today it kind of spiked up 
and it sold off the rest of the day. And some people actually, uh, I talked to a couple guys in the chat room that were holding this thing short and they didn't cover until this panic selling down here. So this was just an excellent short setup. The two day charges uh, is ugly, but um, this is where I told that I told them to, you know, cover into this panic selling. I wish I had held this long, but just a really good short setup. The daily chart really doesn't look too great for short. Now we have this doji candle uh, support at the 10 day EMA it bounced right off of that. So for now, I'm just going to kind of watch this. This was the predictable move here when it went red after this uh, this this move here from the uh, upper one dollar range to uh, four dollars without having a red candle. And then when it had its first red candle and it it looked like it was going to have a red candle yesterday, it was just a great short opportunity for a continuation possible pullback to the 10 day EMA. So that was just a really good short setup. Short of GSL today. Um, this wasn't that great of a trade, uh, but you know it was a profitable trade. I shorted it right over here, right about the, or I'm sorry, the break of the $5.40 support level because it broke under the 10-day EMA on the three-minute chart. And right when it broke, it has some a little bit of panic selling. It dropped down to the low uh, $5.20 level, uh, 20 cent levels. I did not cover it though. Um, it bounced up. I covered it right around here, and it just, as you can see, it went sideways and it did drop back down again. But I did cover it. Not not a crazy gain, but it was just an example of this stock was on the watch list for the past. Uh, week that I was looking for a short on any type of intraday spike here, especially to this resistance level. It's a, it's a, a double top on the daily chart. <clears throat> so uh, for the past week, I've been predicting that this thing was going to have an intraday spike and it was just going to be a good short. Now, if this breaks over 551, it's a potential long play. There just isn't enough volume here. I'm sure bias on this thing because anytime it spikes, it just doesn't seem to hold the spike. But in any event, a good indicator of you know a play that I had been stalking uh, for the past week and it finally came about I just wish that it would have uh, sold off a little bit more to the five dollar ranges but the market was pretty strong into the close and market held up pretty well and I think that had a lot of a lot to do with it with uh, shorts um, you know covering and and people not wanting to take too many profits on stocks that were up today uh, decent setup just uh, wish I would have got a little bit more out of it CSCO um, this is one that I actually tried to trade yesterday uh, I bought it at about 1934 and then I got stopped out about 1918 and it's just making some new lows. Once it cracked this support here, uh, I got out of it and that was pretty much just 19. I got a little bit earlier before the support broke, but uh, essentially I believe the stock is real cheap here. You got the MACD about to go positive, but in the, the stochastic, uh, stochastics are oversold. Uh, th this one you know, is going to go higher. It's just been beaten down a lot. and. Uh, to be honest, I mean, when the market was up 100 points yesterday and it started going red, I just don't want to hold on to it. And it was a good choice uh, to do that, to cut the loss really quick there, because here it is uh, hanging around the low $19 ranges. And I believe the low of the day was 19 too. Yeah, the, the low of the day was 19 exactly. So this thing is really trying to flirt with the 18s. And that kind of worries me is, uh, you know, how, how low is it going to go if it cracks this $19 level? So right now I'm watching it. I want to re-enter this because I know it's super cheap here, but... There's really no catalyst here. Even the market rallying 400-something uh, points here in the past few days uh, can't even give this thing – it can't even turn gains on this stock. So it's just it's really weak. So it makes me think if the market – if the market's rallying and this can't turn green, what happens when the market starts tanking or correcting from this level if we can't uh, have a continuation of this rally? So not a safe stock yet, but I'm looking for reentry. I'd like to see if it holds 19 bucks, but um, still on my watch list. Uh, HHWW, this is a crazy, crazy stock. RSI is at 96.2, one of the highest RSIs I've seen in a long time. Moved up another 6% today. Really no red candle since it started trading. It's a complete pump and dump stock. Uh, and when I say a pump and dump, it, it's a real company. I mean, they do have products that are out there. But uh, when I say it's a pump and dump, I mean that there's a pump going on that these people are paying for promo uh, you know, major promotions on this stock. A lot of mailers are out there. I believe they paid over a couple million dollars from what I've seen. Uh, SEC filings don't really show any type of revenue stream, any type of profitability of this company. Um, and a good, uh, a good indication of a, of a shady company is when they have to pay promoters to hype up their stock. But this thing is just getting this crazy amount of volume. No pullbacks. I can't find any shares of short. Good thing because it just keeps going up. But, I mean, stocks don't go up forever. These types of patterns fail, um, as you can see from the NXTH pattern. I'm going to have to go back uh, a couple years, though. 
but had a very, very similar pattern where it just kept going up every single day. And everyone thought, oh, this thing is never going to pull back. This stock is never going to uh, break down. You know what? They always do, especially when you see a pattern like this, okay? Even the entire stock market uh, does the same thing after a pattern like this, as you guys know. Uh, and where was it? Right before the, uh, you know, the crash, or not the crash, the big correction that was in April, um, when I call the top of the market right over right, uh, right around here, but um, you know where the sustained move is always it always leads to a big drop and a big drop off, and that's what HHW is going to do, and I say is going to do, and I'm not saying if it does, it's when it does, and it's going to drop off just a matter of when, and I uh, hope shares become available to short. Um, I doubt it's going to happen the day that it dumps, so uh, I'll I'll build up a small position if I can get any shares, but. Um, I just haven't been able to find any uh, or be able to locate any at this point. Uh, and DS, <clears throat> this stock, uh, I've, I've taken a loss on this one. I took a pretty good loss on this stock. I um, was holding it for a while. I had um, averaged down on it, and it just never showed any kind of signs of bottoming. I want to get back in this stock. It's really actually for the first time showing real signs of a bottoming out uh, period after this massive decline here. Uh, the RSI is almost coming up over this uh, 30 level it's just it's really teetering on it the stochastics are barely coming above here this is this is a really good indicator that this is going to have a 10 day ema spike uh, it's had a problem at the 10 day ema in the past it's butting up right against it again it's, as soon as this thing breaks that dollar 13 dollar 14 level i think we're going to get a spike here um similar you know uh, similar to uh the dexo chart pattern we saw here today Real long downtrending chart pattern, real ugly chart pattern, and we finally got a little bit, a little bit of a bottoming area right here at the uh, the, sto the stochastics here, right at the 30 level, and then it boom, it spiked up, you know, 40% here and broke right out over the 10-day EMA. ANDS looks very close to wanting to do the same exact thing here, so I will get back in this thing is if it can show some type of reversal strength. I believe that there's a lot of upside here. I think a move to the dollar forty-five level at this point is in the cards here. You know, there's really not too much resistance if it can get above this level. Um, but a, a breakout looks very close to being near here. Uh, I would definitely be putting a stop here at about a buck oh six right here. It's right below, or I'm sorry, right above the fifty-two week low where it hit the other day at about a dollar oh five. <clears throat> but um, this one really looks like it's about ready to go. But um. A very little downside risk here at this point so another one i'm looking at getting back into i'm doing pretty well so anyways those are some of the plays we went over this week and uh if you want to join just go to profitalerts.com and subscribe and you can get nightly watch lists and videos and uh, real-time trading alerts uh from me sent in, uh sent with entries and exits and recommended stop losses